I tell you what, to try and do a geology video and actually come up this road to find fresh cuttings and fresh roadworks, it's a pure fluke. Very quickly, what you see, now I want you to just look at the colour. See the reddy orange? It's sitting on top of white. Right? You've got a layer of reddy orange that's oxidised, so you've got iron. Which you normally associate with volcanics, because I say iron rich. That's what gives you those red orange colours. But it's sitting on top of old, really, really old sediment layers. So we know that this stuff came after this was formed. Take note of the colour coloration. We got bits of orange and that in it. So as this is, look, as this is really old, it's cracked, it's fractured, and as you've got rain, it's it's seeping all the minerals down and it's starting to stain those old sediment layers. But out of pure luck, there's actually a spot up here that's got a heap of um, alluvial, water-worn alluvial gravels. Keep in mind, we're nearly on top of a mountain range that's over a thousand metres above sea level. The only way you get sediments there is if that was once a low point in the ground and everything else around it was higher. Sediments don't run uphill, they go down. And you can tell the way that that is uplifted by the grain of that sedimentary rock. Now the purples, your little patches of purples, quite often what that is telling you is there was ground there that got superheated and it has chemically changed the, the minerals that are in that rock and it gives you those purple colours. So when you see purple stone, it is somewhere along the line come in contact with high heat. And it changes, chemically changes the rock. You can see it's a sandstone. You can definitely see it's like a sedimentary stone. You've got these real big patches of purple. You've got your oranges and browns. That's an indication of high heat. So we know there was some volcanic action going around, on around here. And then, dun dun dun, dun dun dun. Old sediment. Then we've got water-worn stone. As a conglomerate. And it's mixed in there. And then above it, We've got sediment stone again. So I've got a little patch there. And look at what's in there. Quartz. Round quartz pebbles. And what do we normally associate host rock and gold with? Quartz. So we know that this here is an area that had a lot of rapid erosion and deposits formed. And then we go through a period again where it was fine sediments. You can see little quartz veins. They came much later. There's some good good layers there. Again, they start to give you an indication of the, how much uplift there was in the ground. So yeah, just pure chance that there's one little layer there, an exposed patch of old alluvial gravels that have washed in and then been covered over by another layer of sediment. Now, I know that the a lot of people probably asking the question, is there gold in there? I don't know. 
I'm not going to take a sample to find out. That may be, that might happen another day. That's a real distinct layer of those sediments there in that, that sedimentary stone. Coarse sediments, conglomerate rock. And I say that when you get volcanic lava flows that come in contact with sediments and things like that, it, it, it cooks them. So it chemically changes the structure. That's where you start to get these different colours. And I say, these things are all indications that you need to be looking for. They give you clues as to where that gold has come from in the past. That's a really, really good sediment layer through there. Bit of coral. So it was definitely, that there's telling me it was definitely eroding and breaking up a, a coral reef. Anyway, we'll keep heading up the hill.